Safely landing a helicopter on an offshore platform is an outcome that no operator takes for granted. As with all phases of flight, managing the approach depends on the highest levels of training and experience on the part of the crew. The aim of an approach is to get you from the cruise portion of the flight down to somewhere where you can make a safe landing without exaggerated control movements, without exaggerated demands on the power, and safely lined up with where you expect the deck to be. The uh, importance of the, the final approach is that there's less leeway. So if you think of it as a funnel, you start off with a, a big opening of the funnel and that gets progressively smaller as you get closer to the landing site. So managing your path within that funnel becomes more and more critical. It's all about energy management. You know, if you're too high or you're too fast, then understanding that early enough that you can do something about it. So it's about setting different gates at various stages within the approach so that you can measure yourself against those gates. This is why Heli Offshore members have worked together to develop a set of approach path management guidelines that help pilots be well prepared to deal with all the challenges that can threaten the completion of a safe approach. They were developed by a team of experienced senior pilots from around the world. In the offshore environment, the likely things that can go wrong are that the weather will not be as you expect, and therefore when you get to the point where you thought you would see the destination, you can't. So you only have potentially a very short space of time to decide what you're going to do, and you also need to consider then your diversion plan. We have to have an alternate airfield for any offshore destination. Quite often we're on minimum fuel, so we potentially only have one shot at getting onto the platform. If we miss for whatever reason, then we go to the alternate. And so the more preparation that you could have done beforehand, the easier it's going to be for you when you get down to the bottom. I recall an instance where we were on a night medevac callout. Pilot flying had briefed a visual approach. That visual approach ended up being a recovery from a potential low energy state. The pilot clearly fell victim to the lack of visual cues. The difficulties we see in flight path management are primarily caused by crew distraction. If you are distracted on the flight deck, that can lead to a loss of uh, situational awareness. Defined profiles and crew duties are really the only way to mitigate those sort of occurrences. It's all about monitoring. You know, we have two pilots on the flight deck. So one of them is flying, the other pilot who's essentially charged with monitoring to make sure things are safe. So if we didn't have any of that guidance and you've got an inexperienced pilot next to an experienced pilot and the experienced pilot is flying a curved approach because that's how they like to do it and the inexperienced pilot doesn't have any of these gates to look for. He doesn't know whether things are going well or going badly until you get right to the end but it's too late to do anything about it. Having a solid plan for approach path management hinges on pilots being fully prepared for the part they must play at all stages of flight. Continuous reinforcement of non-technical skill sets coupled with well-defined approach profiles is having a positive effect. To adopt the approach management guidelines, operators must firstly define SOPs, which ensure crews conduct meaningful approach briefings, clearly define standardized go-around procedures in terms of crew coordination and automation usage, and define crew duties uh, to ensure mutual support while on the approach. And having real flight data gives operators an accurate picture of what's happening in reality and what adjustments might have to be made to ensure consistently safe operations. Our flight data monitoring program allows us to set triggers so that we can understand how well our aircraft are being flown against these guidelines. So if we see uh, excessive rates of descent or speeds that are too high, then we pick that up and we can see that as data that comes in from every single flight. Standardisation is definitely important. Uh, it allows our crews to work together, uh, even if they've never met each other before. Having these standards produced uh, in conjunction with Heli Offshore and all the operators means that we're all, we're all working in the same direction.